Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TTT Tom's Tech Time. Welcome to the most epic drone fight in 2016, DJI Phantom 4 fighting against the unique Typhoon H. Let's just see which one is the better drone. Actually, you should keep one thing in mind. You were watching one out of 10 videos in total that I shot about these two drones. You can find the videos right there in the playlist or you can find the entire video a link at least pointing at it in the video description below. And next to that, you have all product links in the video description below as well. And right now, enjoy the episode. Don't forget to leave a thumb up and don't forget to subscribe to never ever miss any upcoming episodes again. Stay tuned, fly safe. DJI's remote controller has a compact design and looks rather easy to use. Unique's remote controller, the ST16, is huge and looks rather like a professional's or like a gamer's tool. They both feature all important buttons, but let me cover the main differences. Unique's ST16 has an inbuilt HDMI out port, which you would have to install manually at the DJI remote controller. By the way, a tutorial of mine guides you through that procedure. The Unique remote controller is pretty loud due to the two ventilation openings at the bottom. Next to that, it features two buttons that have no function at all and remind us of the Game Boy Color. The main difference is the inbuilt 7-inch monitor though. It's not just a monitor, but an inbuilt Android tablet. When using the DJI Phantom 4, you can use your phone or mobile device as a monitor. I prefer Apple devices as they are fast and offer a good workflow. Both options have pros and cons. I think that the total size of the unique ST16 is too big and I don't always want to carry around the remote controller when only needing my tablet, for example, when editing or reviewing some footage. I prefer DJI's method, but finally that's a matter of taste. The DJI GO app looks somewhat sorted. All important flight telemetry data is shown at the bottom left hand side, all menus and the battery info at the top, the camera menus at the right and as you're able to connect your mobile device to the internet, you have a real map showing the drones and your position always. If we tap at one of the menus at the top, they pop up and we can check everything or even adjust everything in flight. We can set the return to home altitude for example. We can end or disable the obstacle avoidance sensors. We can change the speed of the gimbal wheel. We can manually choose a channel. Check our batteries. Adjust the gimbal roll or even start a Facebook or YouTube live stream in air. Meanwhile, you can let the copter hover or you fly it around, that is up to you. Unique's app is different. It displays some disorganized info, mixing the battery with the flight telemetry at the left hand side. At the bottom, we see some menus, and at the right hand side, some more information. As you cannot connect it to the internet, there is no map at all. If we hit at the battery icon, for example, a channel menu pops up for some weird reason. But it really gets crazy once you want to play around with the system settings in air or if you want to click at pad to get back to the normal Android screen. If you do so, in flight the copter will automatically switch into return to home and travel back and I think that's an unnecessary risk. Let's now take a closer look at the camera settings. You tap at menu and can now adjust either the photo or video or general camera settings. We can choose the format the video format, the regional code, the white balance. We can apply a style or even customize our own, which I prefer. And we can choose between some crazy and some neutral professional film color presets as D-Log that match the color characteristics of some normal cameras, which is perfect for ground and area filming both. Once you're done, you can now check out the further parameters and either set them manually, ISO and shutter speed, or you can set it to auto. Finally, if you're unhappy with the lighting of a scene, if shooting in auto mode, you can touch at the area you want to be correctly exposed and the Go app adjusts it automatically. Again, Unique's app looks somewhat basic. At the bottom right hand side, we find the camera settings menu. In here, we can only change the resolution, turn the audio on or off, which seems to be pretty senseless in air, we can select one out of four picture styles only, where natural is the only one giving us a somewhat flat image, as raw, for example, lowers the bitrate too much. And finally, we can, and that's the only real cool thing about the ST16, connect to a second remote controller that then controls the camera. But I don't think this is going to be used very often as a super wide angle lens doesn't really need two controllers. And that's it already. At the left hand side, we can now choose a white balance, and hidden right here, if you tap at Auto, 
you will be able to open up the ISO or shutter settings menu. That's a very inaccurate and old fashioned looking camera settings system in total. Finally, let's take a look at some further functions. You can set your mobile device to record your footage to the mobile device in 720p as well. Right after the flight you tap at editor and start creating a clip right away. I love doing so after finishing a shoot on the way back in the car. You can create some pretty handy clips in here already. Take a look at this one for example showing some pieces of film I shot in Israel. One last thing, if you tap on the icon in the upper left corner, you can open up your flight history and check all kinds of flight data, telemetry or take a look at the map or whatever you find interesting. The ST16, the remote controller of the unique Typhoon H, cannot play back or save your footage in flight. The only way to get access to your footage is to remove the microSD card from the drone after landing and then insert it into the microSD card slot at the bottom. This is not very intuitive. By the way, within category 9 we'll be taking a closer look at some really exciting third party apps. Don't miss that. The DJI Remote Controller and RC earn 9 out of 10 points. Unique's Remote Controller and app get only 2 out of 10 points. I think they are a true disappointment. The only pro about them is that they have an HDMI out installed right out of the box. Thank you guys for watching this video. Feel free to leave a thumb up and feel free to subscribe right now to never ever miss any upcoming episodes again. If you feel like you can't resist right now and you need to purchase your copter of choice, you can find the product links right down there in the video description below. And if you still don't know which copter to buy, you should continue to watch my videos as there are nine leftover videos that actually compare these two drones. You can watch them right now and I'm just gonna stop talking and we're gonna continue next video. There you go.